Welcome back to another episode of creating whatever I want, but I want too much. So I wrote down a list of everything that I want to make and stuff that inspires me. So I spent a couple of hours making this blend file that is rigged so I can move this stuff up and down and it will generate these lines of text. And so to get random input for this, I'm going to use these D and D dice. So for example, I can use the D10 and get like crime infested and then I roll D12 and I get magical. And then once we have rolled all these dice, we're left with a unique combination that I have to make into a 3D animation during the day. Let's reset this and let's start with the world. This is the D10. Let's see what world we're going to be in today. Two. So that is a utopian world. Should that be like a utopian or an? This feels like a consonant, but it's a what? I don't know. Okay, so a utopian world. I immediately feel like this could be solved with some some weather aspect like clouds i feel like if the weather is good it's like utopian and maybe it could be clean maybe it, i feel like it's outdoors already like super peaceful every everyone and friends <laughs> yeah okay so, so i can work with that yeah that's that's interesting okay so the next one is just a list of adjectives so what is going to happen eight that is magical so we're going to create something magical. Ooh, I feel like that could be like a particle system or something, something simulated or something like magnets or that's, I definitely like that already. Okay, color. So that's the D20. That's a lot of different colors. Seven. Caramel. That's a beautiful color. So with color, I mean like the primary color. So now this is the most exciting one. What are we actually going to create today? This is the D8. Oh, a lot of good ones here. Let's see. One. A creature. Nice. Ah, oh, I really love creatures. That means we can create life. And life could be anything. Cre creature could be so much. It could be really big or small or... Or we'll wait and see. Let's see what art style we get. Just six different art styles. And last time we got low poly and I really struggled with that. Um, let's see what we get. Abstract. <sighs> okay, so let's see what we got here. In a utopian world, a magical caramel creature, so that's a caramel colored creature, is rendered in an abstract art style. So magical creature, that's a fantastic combination. I really like that already. We can, we can really get some stuff with that. And a utopian world, I'm thinking the weather comes into play for some reason, that it should be like nice weather that you have nothing to worry about, not even the weather. I feel it would be difficult if it would rain. And then the abstract art style. So abstract, does that just mean that I can't really use any ray trace shadows? Should we work in Eevee? I mean, okay, so first of all, I have to just make a magical creature. I'm really excited about this. So let's get into Blender. Okay, so I'll be working in Blender version 3.1. And by the way, this is not going to be a tutorial. So if you're curious at what's happening, at some point in the video, I will have enabled screencast keys so you can see what's going on in the bottom left corner. But if you see any technique that you would like to try yourself, I can recommend to check out the Discord channel, link in the description, because there are a lot of people there that are super good at just spotting different techniques and finding good tutorials for that. So I highly recommend that you join the Discord because it's a lot of stuff to learn there. So I feel like I have to make... I, <laughs> I feel like I want to make a snail or like a... Like the, the motion that you get when you have like a really big like blob of a body and then you have to, yeah, I feel like a snail could be a cool creature to make. Like you, like if you can make like a, and then it's like a wrinkle, like a, like a Jabba the Hutt sort of, no, this isn't Jabba the Hutt. What even is this? Yeah. So, so some, some sort of like a large, large snail body and, and then we're going to have to get like this because it could still be magical. It could still do stuff. Maybe it could have some hands and do some weird magic. Ooh, <laughs> with the hands. <laughs> Let's just try and make a snail. I'm not really a... So I just made a blob and added a bunch of subdivisions to it. Do I have to keep in mind the abstract art style? It's going to be so easy to just push that away all until the end, like happened the last time. And then it's like, oh, it didn't actually end up being in that art style. Let's work on the snail idea just for a little bit more and we'll see if this will turn into anything. I like this shape. Oh, no, I don't. 
Yeah, I like I like that it's so round. It's like a it's like a Pokemon. Perhaps this should be bigger. So this I feel like this is the head, and then this is like. Perhaps this is like a, it's like a proud creature. So we have the, you have the neck that is like behind a little bit. It's like, maybe it's something royal, like a royal worm. I like the idea that it's a snail. Maybe actually the body should be bigger. Just like this wide body. So w where do you even begin when you're gonna animate something like this? Do you do you rig it? So the snail, yeah, the snail shape. I, I can I can see it. I can see that this could be something. It is a, it is a good feeling that this doesn't have to be photorealistic. Perhaps it could be like gliding through the air. What if we're smart from the beginning here? Oh, I, this is already feeling alive. Now when I just did this, I feel like I just did something with a living organism. And I think that's a really good thing. That already I feel like I'm I'm making some sort of... Wouldn't you agree that this feels like life already? So what I'm thinking is maybe it could be rigged with a curve. So if you were to make like a curve inside this body, you know, animating with curves is, is really difficult. Curve deform? Oh. Oh. Nope. Ah. Uh, no. Let's be smart. Okay, so I'm gonna just make it flat from the beginning and then we can make a curve. Let's do it like this and let's give it really few with a curve deform. So this just seems like it's moving so much. Let's stick with this. I think we can make this work. It's so fascinating to just feel. Right at this moment, I feel overwhelmed by the feeling that this is nothing. And it's such an overwhelming feeling. I don't believe that this will turn out to be anything. My soul is convinced that this is nothing right now. Honestly, I have no idea. But if I'm going to be like trying to be deep here, I would say that if you're an artist, you have to do everything you can to try and prevent that feeling. Because right now I'm just feeling that I have nothing. I'm just feeling that this will never be anything. But you wait and see. And if I just keep banging my head against this wall, I think that's going to change. But I don't know when it's going to change. I don't have any any hopes for this. So I'm just going to try to make this stupid... Uh... Oh... Nice. Oh, maybe we should add... Uh... We got a little bit of uh, structure, but not too much. Oh, the... look at this. This is actually... I think this is a bug because I have the modifiers placed wrong on purpose. But it looks like it's there's something inside of this. So it seems like this is like go, something is going through this on the inside. Whoop, it's like it's swallowing something. Maybe this could be the way this thing moves or I mean it should fly. So It's not a creature, it's a worm. And it's not magical. What's a magical creature then? Does it need to have wings? Okay, I'll try I'll try and make a wing. Wing. But I don't want it to actively fly. I want it to just glide. Maybe it can have wings, but it doesn't have to use them. No, I don't know. That's a cool pattern. But is it a wing? Solidify. Nope. So this is going to be some of the stuff that I'm going to just cut away. And then you think, oh, so this guy knew what he was doing all along. But little did I know that I'm just messing with a bunch of stuff. So this was supposed to be a wing, but it's... Nope. Creature ideas. So could I rig this somehow? We need to have this down here. Maybe this could be something. And then it's like this. Okay. So you're going to be stupid. I wonder if I'm going to edit away all these mistakes. Because I've spent at least half an hour doing nothing. So what is a magical creature? This is what it looks like to be stuck, by the way. And everyone gets stuck. 
I think the pain that I feel right now is important to feel. Like, I don't feel that anything I'm doing is correct. And I feel so stuck. Maybe it could walk like a... Okay, let's make a curve. Curves are good. And this is not like a really curve, it's a path. So this is like the fourth curve I'm making today. What if this curve is just a path that our creature will, will fly on? Yeah, okay, I'm feeling something. That we make this path so we can make a creature that flies like <laughs> a snail-like flying creature. So let's just first make this long path. Maybe with a little bit of a swoop in it. It goes, flies in a loop. And it's just having fun because it's a utopian world. So let's take inspiration from this shape. So we're going to make a flat magical creature. Which is going to be like this. A little bit of that. Okay, so let's not do these wings, but let's do some sort of organic looking wings. So let's do this. No, this is too much of a plane. It needs to be more organic. So it's it's like, maybe it's more like an arm. Yeah, I, I think I like this. And maybe we can animate it a little bit, so it's it has some sort of, uh, I don't know, we'll figure that out later. But at least we have some sort of wing now. Because so I do want to make a snail. I think this one can go away now. It was a good inspiration, but now let's make a little bit of a body hair. So I don't know what this is. It feels like a creature. So I feel like this could be flying somehow. Or it's it's like, it should be gliding through the air and then bending. Just like according to this. Let's actually try that. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite weird. This could end up being utopian in some sort. So now I'm feeling that I'm happy with this result, but it's just so unfortunate that when you watch this video, you're going to think that it was pleasant all the way because it was not. It was uncomfortable to think that I wasn't good enough to make anything look like this. So if anyone is watching this and thinking that they're not good enough, you are. Because I thought I wasn't. We're gonna have to make this a little bit bigger, I think. So that when this flies through, like... Wow, this could be nice when... If we have a lot of these magical creatures... I think if we make a lot of these creatures... This could look quite utopian. I think this needs to have like some sort of magical trail after them. So that they are magic, but they are already levitating and flying around. So should we make a face? I, I feel like it's quite risky to add eyes, but uh, we're going to have to try. <laughs> it looks weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm outlining the basic shape of the eye. So I'm just trying to find out what, what should it be? Should it be like a... So I'm still trying to find what shape I want for the eye. I definitely don't want it to be round. Nope, it's too angry. Perhaps this could be cool. <laughs> it looks like sunglasses. So I made this curve set up where I can just draw and it's going to mirror. Then I can just do like this. And I think some of these could work. Maybe like a whoop. Magical creature. It could start here. And then move all the way over. <laughs> That's a little bit cool. Maybe something with multiple eyes. So it goes like this. And maybe some lines here. And then maybe some hair. That's really ugly. And then maybe it has some, some circles here. Yeah, it can't really look like a... <laughs> it looks like an airplane. <laughs> oh, maybe like a, a big circle up here. Yeah, and then something along its back spawns from these circles so we need some long lines maybe some i don't know okay so this could be like the basic layout and then oh yes of course it needs to have like a it needs to have something like this of some sort so i don't want to make a fish or something underwater i just want to make something that can control itself in the air because it is magical but it has to steer i think 
I think that could add something. <laughs> so these lines are quite ugly. So I think this is a good sketch for just the shape of the creature. So now I'm gonna try and just make this a little bit more beautiful. And I think the face needs some work, but I gotta take a leak first. Okay, so let's try and make this into an actual something. Uh, first I gotta hide this, and then I somehow try to join these. Now we're onto something here. Yeah, I want this to be one smooth shape. Okay, so this is important. Now we get to change the silhouette of the character, and then it has to go really narrow at the end. Because it has to be aerodynamic. You know, some sculpting would probably just save me a lot of time, but I feel like I've committed to this now, so. So I think we're less snail and more whale right now, but I don't, uh, I don't hate that. Perhaps I can smooth it a little bit, just relaxing it. I feel like this is a creature now, more than ever. But the arms have a little bit of a weird shape, so yeah, so it's going to be something like this. But we're gonna, let's forget about the pattern just for now. So now we can make it follow the curve again. That loop is so cool, it looks like it's having fun. See that? I really like that. Oh, maybe we could do a uh, simple deform modifier. We move this uh, before the curve, I think. No, we move this after the curve, and then we can rotate it, and then you can set the origin to be the curve. See that? That is so cool. It sort of spins around, and it looks... Wow, I'm getting so... Uh, I'm getting such a utopian feeling already. It's going around like... Whoosh. It needs to be like a really big loop. And then we need to make it go a little bit more up and down. Perhaps this animation is going to be like a super wide angle shot. And then so you can really see the utopian world part. I'm feeling this motion already. This is turning out way better than I expected. Especially with the, when, it's, when it's spinning like this. I wonder if I can animate the amount of spin. <laughs> okay, this is way too much. <laughs> but can this be animated? Nope. Ah, oh, that doesn't work. I really enjoy this already. It feels like it's a simulation, but it's just really smooth. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the biggest shortcut I've ever discovered is when you're in the timeline, you can press control tab and you get right to the graph editor. How sick is that? I usually do this and then this. And now you can just schmoop, boop. Fantastic. And it even includes the sound effects. Schmoop, boop. No, oh, boop schmoop. I don't know. But this is not a tutorial. This is a uh, very serious video. So let's speed it up a little bit. It looks a little bit slimy in some weird way. It feels like a, a combination between disgusting and elegant. Very, very interesting. Okay, maybe we should try and make the world. Utopian abstract world. What is a utopian world? Maybe we can make some sort of sunset. Yeah, maybe we could use like the sky thing. But what I'm worried about is that it's going to be a little bit too uh, realistic. But I really like this motion. And we get so much for free once we start with the swoop. See that? Amazing. Yeah, and then we can do some goes like up and down a little bit. I think this can be fun. Yeah, oh, you see this? This is going to be the best part of the animation. When it goes like this. Boom. You can see that it's having fun. Yeah, definitely. I'm super stoked about this right now. But we need to figure out the world situation. Maybe a tunnel. That's a good starting point, isn't it? I want to make a tunnel. I'm feeling hexagons today. This is going to be huge. Hmm. Tunnels are great. I'm so glad I made a tunnel. Maybe we could do like a super symmetrical shot like a really volumetric symmetrical camera just sort of pulls out from this large detailed uh, hexagon thing i think this could be really nice so let's just make a camera how big is this creature 19 meters so we've made a 19 meter floating thing i like that oh that's weird we're gonna have to just obscure that with a clever camera angle <laughs> look at this and then whoop, and then whoop. Ah, oh, this is going to be good. But we're gonna have to uh, make our animation longer. 20 seconds. Okay, so we gotta make it really long and elegant, I think. We gotta make it like this. Is this better? I think it is. We have to hide the background, it's too big right now. I like this new tail. The tail needs to be just a little bit slimmer. It's actually a needle. For some reason, it's not following completely. Oh, I really like that. No, I don't like it. It has to follow completely. 
I think this is just the this has to be before the curve. So now this will follow the curve perfectly. I like this. It feels like there's something that's playing. Whoop. And then whoop. So we're going to have to create a uh, really large background and this is quite big so it should actually work so we can follow it like this hmm perhaps we don't need all this let's use an array modifier so we can do some stuff let's change it to eevee actually i'm not really sure if we'll stay there but let's try it for now Okay, now we're talking. Wow, that's trippy. <laughs> is this something cool? So the caramel color is actually this one. I'll pretend that this isn't a blend file, it's just a smooth UI. <laughs> Let's actually just make the caramel color right away. Yeah, so maybe maybe the world should not be caramel. This is going to be a cycle trender, I can feel it already. But let's just be in Eevee a little bit longer. This silhouette is amazing. Ooh, yes. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just place the camera here. I can feel it. And then we'll move it back. And then we're gonna have to increase the clipping. And then this will be one of those really symmetrical shots, maybe. You know, I'm feeling more and more that abstract is not really my style. But I think that's a really cool challenge. Really want to make this into the real world but I can't. Oh, this is great. So I'm thinking we'll start out with this like total shot and then we'll get in like this and we can really follow this movement. This needs to be a little bit more slim, I think. And I'm starting to think that I'm not really sure if we're going to need like a super defined face. I feel like the arms aren't aerodynamic enough. Is that a good idea? Oh, something bad has happened. Yeah, it's here. The problem with the merging. Can we increase this? Yeah, that works. Let's actually rename this to creature so we know what we have. So it's not that aerodynamic, but I think that's cool. Because then it looks like it actually has arms and it has to swim around. It's a limit to how far you can get with only proportional editing, you know? Like, I would like to make it like this, but... Oh, maybe that actually could work. Yeah. That could work. It's more like a whale shape now. Okay, let's get back to this. Let's make sure we are making a magical creature. I'm quite certain about that. And then the abstract part is just, I, I can't really go crazy. I would just love to make this world into like, you know, the end of Interstellar, where you see that this long world tunnel with grass going up every side. I would just love so much to watch this creature in a world like that, but that wouldn't be abstract. So I'm gonna have to make it a little bit more stylized. Maybe that's an invitation to just go crazy with the glass shader, because I'm really feeling the glass shader for this one. Imagine this in cycles with a crystal glass shader and then uh, a super smooth volumetric light from behind we almost won't need any textures i want to do that right away actually set this to cycles try and give this a glass material caramel what that's going to be too dark hmm it looks cool but it looks better close up it doesn't look so good here or i think it maybe looks a little bit cool and then we're going to make a big volumetric box Let's just give this a volumetric material, this cube. Oh, yes. Oh my God. If you're ever in doubt, add volumetrics. Look at this. I'm not sure about the world color though. Wow, this is much better. Look at this angle. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but the volumetrics are sort of exiting this thing and we're living at the edge of this. Hmm. How utopian is it though? <laughs> uh, we can deal with that later. No, <laughs> I'm getting really excited again, but I'm feeling maybe we should go back to the symmetrical camera and then we could try and add some more stuff. Maybe we could add a grid and it's just in the background inside the tunnel, you know, but this looks almost like a prison. That's not utopian, that's dystopian. Maybe we could just try and keep this a little bit clean because it is an abstract world and the strength in this scene is this strong color. The details inside here are so cool. I don't think we're gonna have to add like the face. I just think this could be like this creature just floating around in this incredibly vast space. So the camera will just pull out slowly like this. <gasps> we're getting further away from the abstract look every time I feel like we're onto something. That sucks. I don't know how what's so utopian about this world. Probably nothing. I'm not sure if it's a big world or it's a small one. It can be a really, really small one. 
I just really want to go crazy with the depth of field there already. But I know I shouldn't. That makes it more of a real world. Wait, what about this? Simple deform. Is that cool? Poof, that silhouette is really cool. But it's not abstract. It's real. Can we do something with this? Look at this light. Look at all these patterns. Oh, so the problem here is that this isn't uh, long enough. I know what we should have done a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. See this? You want me to just make this actually good? Okay, that works. So that means I can delete this. Swoink. And now this is another one, isn't it? Look, you see this? Now it's two. Somehow this feels a little bit utopian because they're like... They're doing whatever they want. They're like going around and uh, living their life. And they seem quite magical. So now the question is, how many do we make? I think it should be quite fast to make a few. Just do like this. And then now we have uh, a mirrored one. Okay, at least I have an easy system to just make more. That's what I'm gonna do. Is it better if it's diffuse, maybe? I think it is. And then this one too. Yeah, it looks abstract. Okay, so let's see how fast we can duplicate this. And that's another one. Nice. This is a really efficient uh, way. This could probably be ge randomly generated if you have a big brain and know how to use geometry nodes, but I have a small brain. Let's do a test render and just see where we are. It's always really exciting. So I really like the color and I think this silhouette look could be quite cool. This is going to take a really long time to render. Just 256 samples takes almost 30 seconds. Ooh, perhaps there could be someone that are swimming sort of inwards towards the depth. That could be cool. And then I really want to add some particles or stuff like that. But I'm getting closer to the feeling that we're we're making something photorealistic. And that's not the assignment. We, it needs to be abstract. Yeah, let's try and add just a few more of these creatures. Let's do one that sort of goes into the depth. I'm really interested to see if that's possible. Is that the wrong way? Yeah, it's the wrong way. That's no problem. We can just... Is that easy? Yep, it is. It needs to be more three-dimensional. It needs to go over here and then there. Yeah, that's going to be much better. I wonder if this is going to end up looking like an infested place where it's like, oh, there are all these swimming creatures everywhere. Or if it's going to look like a magical utopian world where they can live freely and <laughs> i'm not sure yeah let's start with the camera here and then it's going to slowly move out i think that could create like this calm experience this guy needs to come at the later stage he doesn't get to rotate that much because it looks quite weird so if you're looking at this right now and thinking wow i can't believe he knows how all this works and yeah i don't if i were to edit this movement what would i do i would probably just delete it and just start over again i would do this and then just do another one of these and then it would move like <laughs> that's probably the easiest way to just fix this right now if this was coding it would be spaghetti code <laughs> it even looks like spaghetti i love how we only had to make one guy go like towards the depth and now it feels like oh everyone is going everywhere but in reality they're like on these planes <laughs> and then there's just one guy going like this that's incredibly cool to see how little it takes and also remember the idea I had earlier that we should try and uh, focus on one of them I still think that could be cool to just cut and then do a close-up of our main guy, which is this one, the creature original. So apparently I've had a hidden camera in my scene all the time. That's weird. Boop -doop -doop. Maybe it would be cool if the camera moves up. So we start down here and we move up here. Okay, so we're gonna start out here. This thing passes. And we got our main character. That's where we cut. I think it could be some cool sound design here as well. Oh, that's... You see that? It looks alive a little bit. That little oink. I think this is coming together quite nicely. I definitely feel like we've been able to make a creature. Let's do a, a test render just of this frame. And let's see. I do think it's too dark. Perhaps we could make some detail that light up the scene. You know, I want to see this in a different material. What if there were like some sort of element on this? Like maybe this one. See that? I think that's quite elegant. Some sort of uh, arm structure. It kind of looks a little bit more alive then. Maybe we could do it here as well. Maybe this one? Huh. It looks alive now, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and then this is the this is the main one. You see, none of these other guys has it, but this one. 
He's got the special. Uh, he's got the special thing. Yeah, he definitely has got something special. I think that can look really nice, even though it's dark. Oh, <gasps> maybe. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe like a pattern. Maybe like three stripes. Yes. Maybe just so it falls off like this. That could work. Huh, I feel like that could actually work. I'm getting sort of like a Nemo vibe. So one thing we haven't tried yet is to add light inside this guy. So let's try this. Just a really simple, it's like a, it's like a core of light. Doesn't that look a little bit like something? And then this could have like, a, yeah, 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 this could have like a shader on it. That's crazy. Huh, this could be cool. Then something incredibly bright. Okay, nice. So we got some sort of core here. That's that's amazing. This looks like a, it's like fire or something. There we go. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Then it could animate. Or would that be uh, distracting? Yeah, it looks a little bit alive. There's just something in there, you know? I think that could work. And let's just do a render and see what this looks like. Hmm, I like the highlights here. Hey, I don't feel like we're too far off, actually. I feel like this world could be utopian because... There are so many creatures that are just having fun or just living. So I feel like this emission part is too flat. So maybe we could add the emission on top. Is that going to give any... Yeah, it is. Let's do another render now. Now I think this could be just a little bit more detailed. I'm not sure if you can pick this up on YouTube. But you can see here. Here you can see this subtle... And then this is a little more. I'm not sure if that's going to show up in the YouTube video. Oh, and by the way, I made this exponential glare setup, but I'm I'm liking it less and less. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to disable these two. I'm just going to do a simple glare node, fog glow, high, and then set the mix to like minus 0.96 or something. But this is not a tutorial, so I don't have to inform you that I'm be I'll be saying the lens distortion dispersion to point node. So let's do another still render. So we're actually at 40 seconds per frame in a lower sample count than I would like to have for the final render. I feel like there's something with the balance in the scene. So right now there's like, there's nothing here, but there's something here. But I think that's something I can look more into when I've seen the preview render. Okay, so 34 seconds per frame times 600. So that's a five hour render. We can't do that for a preview render. We're gonna have to do 50% resolution, 64 samples. Let's see how long that's going to take. So that's from 34 seconds to five seconds. And we're probably going to get all the information we need. Okay, so I'll stop the recording. I'll do the preview render and I'll get some lunch and I'll get back to you. And I'm gonna mentally prepare myself to hate the preview render because I always dislike it very much. And then I'm gonna tweak some stuff and then I'm gonna feel better. But first I'm gonna get myself some food. So. I'll see you when the render is done. Okay, so the render is finished and let's have a look. Huh, I really like the motion more here than I thought I would. Especially this one, when we cut in so it's close. Huh. I really like this. <laughs> I was prepared to not like this. You know, the beginning is a little bit weird. I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna place them here instead. And I think we can see that they are symmetrical. So we're gonna have to just recreate the movement of one of these in the background. But I don't think this is going to require that much tweaking. Especially with the... Yeah, the, the cut, it's just so cool. Because, like, we get to become a part of this world. Just when it cuts, we're like, oh, so it is... So it is real, you know? I think with the correct sound design, this could be... A utopian world. I feel so calm looking at this. So my argument that this would be utopian is that these guys are like just having a good time. Look at this. Doesn't this feel like this guy is having just a little bit of a good time at least? <laughs> and all these other are like, they're like dancing in a way. And if everything you have to worry about in life is just how to dance, then that could be a little bit utopian, right? I'm not sure if I would like to live here because there's so so few things to do. <laughs> Just swim around. And they definitely do feel magical. And the color is there. Caramel color. It even maybe looks a little bit like caramel as well. Melted caramel. I think it is an abstract art style. The, the depth of field might be pushing it, but that just... Uh, that's just to create more depth in the scene, I think. Okay, so which one is it? It's this one. He is going to get a new path in life. Okay. Ooh. There we go. Okay, so I just want to make these smoother. 
the thing I talked about, we're gonna have to make this go further over here. You know, working with curves is just so nice, especially when you're making objects follow the curve. I just really like this process. Perhaps it could do like a really big loop. Nope, <laughs> I regret that. See this? Control Z times 18. That's a good sign, right? Yeah, I think that's all it takes. And we got this one, this main guy. I feel like I want to make something where I isolate this creature and just use it for something else because it's such a cool idea to just have like a... Yeah, especially this. It's kind of like... Yeah, like a... It feels so natural. And I didn't plan any of this motion. I just drew a curve, added some twist thing on it. This one that just goes in front of the frame. I want this to be crazy. Well, it is a magical creature, so it can behave like... I mean, I don't know the limitations. I'm very curious to see if this takes too much attention. It is sort of unfocused. It's like a foreground element, so I feel like we have an opportunity here to just mess around a little bit. But now I think we're onto something. It just sort of... It looks like a simulation. So when I'm watching this now, I feel like the natural point of interest is to follow this guy, and then, oh, there's some foreground stuff here. And then my interest goes back to our main guy and then I can see that he's having a good time. I feel like I should be working on this longer. You know, I mean, the obvious change that would be really nice here would to do like this and then this and you speed it up like a... like it comes down and then slows down. If it goes down fast and then slows down and then goes fast again. That could help to make it a little bit more interesting, I think. So I think I'm going to try and use this thing for something else as well. It feels wasted to just use it in this short animation. But right now, I feel confident that I should just try and do the final render, actually. So, in a utopian world, a magical, caramel-colored creature is rendered in an abstract art style. So that's the second episode in this series. I'm going to um, make this character available on Patreon at least. I'm going to try and use it a little bit more in the future as well and maybe develop it and see what it can turn into. And uh, if you want to see how this blend file is made and you want to try it yourself or pick it apart and see how it works, I'll make it available on the Discord server where we do weekly challenges like this. Also, I'm really starting to enjoy the community that we have on this Discord server. So uh, yeah, you should join. Maybe I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.